Well, this morning I'm going to uh, begin a new uh, collection of sermons or a new series of sermons entitled Whole Life Stewardship. Whole Life Stewardship. I introduced this topic um, last year, just a few months after I came, as we were considering uh, the budget and things for uh, this coming year. And I did in one sermon all seven of these points, and we're going to spread that out over the next several weeks, actually between now and all the way up until Advent, the start of the Christmas season. We're going to be looking at each of these topics and then a couple of other uh, responses to them uh, around Thanksgiving. So we're going to be talking about what it means to live our whole life as stewards of the precious gifts that God has given to us. I've identified seven of those, and there are probably others if you uh, wanted to go through Scripture, things that you might pick out. But very broadly, I've identified seven areas of stewardship. Now, if you kind of do any Bible study, you know that the seven, the number seven is kind of an important number in the Bible. It is a number of completeness. So if we're going to talk about a complete life or a whole life lived in stewardship, I thought it was fitting that we have, uh, have seven of those things. So read these off, if you would, with me from left to right across the top. They are gospel, time, abilities, money, relationships, health, and creation. Those seven things are precious gifts that God has given to us. And all he has asked in return is that we would be good managers, good stewards of these gifts. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to consider what it means to be a steward of our time. You know, time is that one thing that we can't create any more of and we can't get back once we've used it. It is a gift for the moment. And so how are we good stewards of time? Stewards of our abilities, the talents, the different capabilities and the different interests that God has given us. How do we use those to be a part of the kingdom? Of course, we will talk about stewardship of our resources, our finances, And how often, when you hear the word stewardship, does your mind immediately go to this one topic? For most church people, that's where we go when we hear the word stewardship, isn't it? Well, there goes the preacher talking about money again. But you know, stewardship's broader than just money. It is about about all the gifts that God gives us. And money, while important, is just one of those gifts. We will talk about being stewards of our relationships. God gives us the gift of people he gives us the gift of family he gives us the gift of friends he gives us the gift of being a spiritual family beyond even those uh, blood connections that are ours this is where i'll go to meddling stewardship of our health (laughs) some of us could do a little better job at being caretakers of this residence that god has given us I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about us. Scripture says God dwells in us, that we are his temple. And if we are the temple of God, well, we got some spring cleaning to do. And I know it's fall, but, you know, we'll we'll get it done. And then lastly, we'll talk about what it means to be stewards of this world that God has given to us. This beautiful creation that we are a part of, that God has asked us has asked it boy you can tell i my uh, southern roots are coming out (laughs) that god has asked us to manage and care for and how can we do that but this morning we start with the most important gift that god has given to us the gospel and he has asked that we would be good stewards of the gospel The most precious thing that God has offered is His Son, Jesus Christ. And so what we do with Jesus Christ and what we do with the message of Jesus Christ comes first place in our lives. We are to be stewards of this gift, His Son, and what His Son did for us. I'm going to play a little video clip and ask you to watch that as we consider what the word gospel really means. And then we'll talk a little bit about being good stewards of it. The word gospel technically means good news, but has come to mean so much more. In today's English, it means the good news of Jesus Christ and the redemption offered through Him. 
truth of this good news has led to the common expression, the gospel truth, referring to something that is unquestionably true. In the New Testament, the Greek word translated gospel or good news, euangelion, appears 76 times. The Greek word was once used for bringing various types of good news, such as news of a military victory or a joyous event. The New Testament writers applied it to the ultimate good news, salvation through Jesus Christ and the coming of the kingdom of God. And this has become its common usage. From the related word, euangelistes, the word evangelist, the bringer of good news. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. The word gospel. The Greek word means good news. Good news is for what? Good news is for sharing. When you get good news, you don't hold on to it. It's something you want to pass along and you want to share. And the word that we have moved into our English language as evangelist comes from that Greek word meaning sharer of good news. The good news is that God loved us enough that he sent his son to pay a debt that we could not pay for ourselves because none of us are perfect. All of us mess up. All of us fall short of God's plan for our lives. None of us live up to the standards that God has set forward in Scripture the way way Jesus did. And because of that, because of that continual break in the relationship that goes back from the very beginning of time. Adam and Eve had but one rule to follow. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did Adam and Eve do? They chomped down on those apples. We don't really know that they were apples, but it kind of works, right? In the rest of the Old Testament, God comes to his people and offers to have a very unique relationship with them if they would just serve him alone, to serve him faithfully and yet how often did the people of israel walk away from him and he would have to send a prophet to call them back to the father who loved them so finally in the new testament god sent his son once and for all no longer would the prophets come no longer would the sacrifices be required in the temple No longer would the sacrifices be required in a tabernacle. God sent his son to be that one sacrifice for all of us who wander away. And God wants to come home. The gospel is that simple. The gospel is that simple. I want to share with you from the gospel of Mark. And we call the first four books of the New Testament Gospels because they are the stories about the life and ministry of Jesus. So the good news of Jesus as it's offered to us by Mark in chapter in chapter 4 beginning at verse 3 the scripture says, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundredfold. And then Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
What I want to offer to you about uh, being a steward of the gospel involves four things. Four things are required to be good stewards of the gospel. And the first is this. You have to receive the gospel before you can be a steward or manager of the gospel. In the parable of the soils, what happened to the seed that fell on the hard and rocky ground? It was snatched up. And there was nothing left. What happened to the seed that fell in the shallow soil? In other words, it wasn't really received in. It was just there on the surface. What happened to that seed? Well, it sprouted, but then it withered away and it didn't last very long. And of course, the same is true of that that fell in the thorns. It was choked out. But what about, what about the seed that fell or was received into the good soil, the fertile soil? soil the ready soil that seed went on to produce a great harvest 30 60 and even a hundred fold if we are to be good stewards of the gospel it begins by receiving the gospel into our lives in its fullness openly receiving it without the restrictions and without all of the other things, taking hold of it, not just having it on the surface, but but taking it in fully. The Scripture says that Jesus Christ came to save the law. We receive the gospel by simply saying, I'm lost. I am one of those people that's undone. I'm one of those people who don't get it right. I'm one of those people that need help to live the way I know God wants me to live. And when I say that I'm one of those people and ask Christ to come into my life and take over, and that's where we kind of get mixed up. We, we want him to come in, but we don't want him to take over. I invite Christ into my life, and I want you to take over The scripture says that there is nothing that God won't forgive. If we are faithful to confess his son, he will be faithful to confess us and to wash away our sins. It's not because of how good we are. It's not because we show up at church every Sunday. It's not because we think we have it all figured out. It's not because we live a good life because the scripture makes very clear all of us mess up. Those of us who think we've got got it right well we're not quite there yet none of us have obtained perfection none of us get it right and so all of us need to make that simple acknowledgement and say i want to get it right and the only way i can do that is by having jesus in my life we shared the scripture a couple of weeks ago john three sixteen, that famous verse that you know we're taught from sunday school And even non-church people tend to know this one verse. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All we have to do is say, yes, come in, take over, and help me live a better life than what I'm living now. Folks, that's what it takes to receive the gospel, that simple acknowledgement. It's a free gift. God gives it to all who would believe.